Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, there are more stories on the front pages of the newspapers today about inappropriate behaviour by MPs at Westminster. They have come to light in the wake of the Harvey Weinstein scandal in Hollywood. No substantiated allegations of that seriousness have yet to emerge here. But yesterday, the leader of the House, Andrea Leadsom, with Theresa May by her side, sought to show that the government was on the front foot in dealing with the issue. As members of Parliament, our constituents will be rightly appalled at the thought that some representatives in Parliament may have acted in an entirely inappropriate way towards others. These reports risk bringing all of our offices into disrepute. I know this is an issue of great concern to you, Mr Speaker, and I know that you will do everything you can to tackle this issue. And I know that members from all parties will want to work alongside you to investigate every claim, provide the right support in the future, and make sure this never happens again. Mr Speaker, it is a right, not a privilege, to work in a safe and respectful environment. These plans will ensure that Parliament takes a zero-tolerance approach. Andrea led some updating at the Commons yesterday. And this morning, The Sun's front page led on Defence Secretary Michael Fallon's confession that he repeatedly touched a female journalist's knee during a radio interview 15 years ago. But Julia Hartley Brewer, the journalist in question, insisted she was not a victim and responded to the story this morning by tweeting a picture of her knees. She said, full medical checkup this morning and yes, both of my knees are still intact. Get a grip, people. I'm joined now by former MP and whip Rob Wilson. Thank Welcome you. to The Daily Politics. What did you make of the story of Julie, Julia Hartley Brewer and the Defence Secretary, Michael Fallon? Well, I think the first thing to say is this is no bigger or smaller problem than in other walks of life. So there are plenty of companies, probably organisations, including the BBC, where, people, where you've had men putting their, their hand on a woman's knee. Now, the question in this case is, was it inappropriate or not? Now, clearly Michael Fallon has said it was inappropriate and has apologised. It did happen a long time ago, although that's no excuse. And obviously, uh, Julia Brewer has made her feelings clear on the case. Right, so should it be taken any further? I don't think in this case, because neither of the participants in that uh, want it to be taken further. What is the benchmark of behaviour, then, in your mind that should trigger some sort of sanction or even an MP being sacked? Well, it's not really in my mind that counts. It's in the mind of the people involved in the incident. Now, you know... But someone has to make a judgement. Well, there are judgments in employment law about how people should be treated, and I think that that is the benchmark that we should try and use. If you've, if you've made laws as members of Parliament, you should be trying to keep those laws and uphold them. And that means also in situations where you are dealing with your own staff, but also when you're dealing with other people's staff. There are certain standards in public life that are set out quite clearly. Right, but who do you go to? at the moment within the Palace of Westminster, if MPs are self-employed and they're also then employers, you don't go to the MP who allegedly is harassing you and say, you're harassing me, you, you want to go somewhere else and you can't, so do you go to the whips? Well, this is one of the big problems that there is in Westminster and I acknowledge this and I think anybody with a brain would acknowledge this. The whole human resources system, set, the way it's set up in Westminster is wrong. It should not be that uh, MPs are employing their own staff and responsible in that way for their staff. There should be a proper human resources part, uh, department that has the teeth that any organisation, like whether it's the BBC, the NHS or any other organisation has, to investigate and, if, if appropriate, to bring the police into the matter as well. Should the Trade Minister, Mark Garnier, um, who asked his secretary at the time to buy sex toys and then used a demeaning phrase to describe her, should he be sacked while he's investigated? Well, that's uh, a difficult one because there are obviously contrasting um, interpretations of that story. I've seen both both sides of the argument. Um, he says that he hasn't uh, done the same things that that the uh, 
ex-secretary has accused him of. So it would need a proper investigation first, I think. Right. It was about context, I think, yeah. rather than the comments yeah. weren't made. I mean, if, if I had been Mark Garnier, I certainly would not have asked a, a PA to go and buy a sex toy, and I certainly wouldn't have called her by the name that he used. Right. I mean... There is context to what happened there, but do you think while he's investigated, he should be suspended or at least uh, have the whip taken away? Well, as far as I understand, he has admitted to using uh, the expression that he used and he has admitted to asking uh, his secretary, historically, his secretary to go out and buy sex toys. My view is if he had any common sense whatsoever, he'd have stood down uh, until whatever investigation goes forward. But this is all part of... I disagree with you. Mm. You know, the difference between companies and other organisations is they don't stand up in Parliament representing our democracy. They are not public servants that uh, are supposed to be above above, uh, you know, you're not above the Nolan principles, if you see what I mean, and some of this behaviour is above and, uh, and not right. And I think that the thing that was being missing in all of this, yesterday the government, rightly good, has said we're going to put better procedures in place, we want to renew code of conduct, what Harriet Harman said was fantastic, what the Speaker said was fantastic, but all the onus remains upon the essentially the victims and the women to have a better procedure uh, and, and, and I think that that's wrong. Nobody is saying what is going on with our parliamentarians that this is an institution that thinks in 2017 this is still acceptable with MPs yesterday saying oh poor us, we're now a witch hunt. Um, you know, they've got to get a grip. Do We've you think it is a witch hunt? No, I don't think it's a witch hunt. I think that there are clearly MPs that are behaving very inappropriately and those uh, individuals need to be held to account, taken to task, and if, if it means they lose their ministerial job, well, so be it. Do you know, I mean, the allegations have been made, you're a former whip, did you have information on individual MPs relating to any sexual misconduct? Clearly there's a flow of information all the time into the whip's office. Some of it will be to do with uh, things outside of sexual nature, some of it will be to do with uh, you know, sexual harassment and other things. Now, it's up to the chief whip then to take the action that he deems appropriate. But it is not really, the whip system is not fit for purpose in terms of dealing with uh, employee matters. Except you, to... had, you have had then information that could be used. And if it's appropriate to report that information to the police, I'm sure the chief whip would do that. Right. I mean, do you believe there is a dossier list of names of MPs and ministers who are of concern? Yes. Right. And final word to you, Louise, before we move on. Uh, can I just say, before I say that, this is not something that is to do with the Conservative Party or Conservative MPs. This is across all political parties and okay. all aspects of um, industry but, but, and business uh, in this country. Well, very briefly. The, the key difference is you are parliamentarians that people go out and vote for and you govern our country. So your behaviours as a set of individuals should be above reproach. I do agree re with reproach, that. And All it right. has not been beyond reproach. I agree Rob with Wilson, that. Thank you for coming in. Now, just to make it clear, since we are in the business of accuracy, the knee-touching incident didn't take place during a radio interview. It took place during a dinner, just for clarity. Former member of Labour's National Executive Committee has told the BBC she was raped at the age of 19 at a party event by a party member and was then persuaded by a senior Labour official to drop her allegations. Bex Bailey is now calling for an independent agency to investigate reports of assault and harassment within the party. Our political correspondent Vicky Young reports. Bex Bailey has decided to speak out. She hopes talking about her personal ordeal will help change the way all political parties handle allegations of sexual misconduct. She says she was raped at the age of 19 and her party didn't do enough to help her. I was seriously sexually assaulted at a Labour Party event by, uh, it wasn't an MP, but someone who was more senior to me. I told a senior member of uh, staff. It was suggested to me that I not report it. I was told that if I did, it might damage me. I wasn't uh, given good advice. I wasn't given a procedure when I asked for it so that I could sort of see what would happen if I did report it and then make a decision. Um, it seemed to be that there wasn't one that existed. Bex Bailey believes this is a problem that goes right through politics at every level. Order. Yesterday, MPs called for change and the need to give people confidence that their complaints will be taken seriously. 
one of the things that um, it needs is an element of independence. Uh, women need to be able to report to an independent agency so that they know that these issues will be dealt with fairly, that the political bias will be taken out of them, um, and so that they feel that they can have the confidence to report these difficult issues without feeling that they'll be penalised as a result. The Labour Party has responded to the interview saying we'd strongly recommend that the police investigate the allegations of criminal actions that Bex Bailey has made. They added that Labour will launch an independent investigation into claims that a party employee acted improperly over these 2011 allegations. For years there have been rumours at Westminster about sexual misbehaviour. The BBC has seen a list that's circulating, containing claims, many of them unproven, against several Conservative MPs and ministers. But the real concern here is that all political parties have been too slow to support and encourage those who want to speak out about bullying, harassment and sexual assault. This summer, Labour beefed up its procedures to deal with complaints of sexual harassment to make sure they're treated with sensitivity. My leader, Jeremy Corbyn, has said he takes this issue very seriously. We take a zero tolerance to any allegations of harassment, uh, both in Parliament and within our party. And he said that he will work with Theresa May to find an overarching system where people can feel confident that if they make a complaint, it's dealt with seriously. Everyone seems to agree that the system must improve, but taking the politics out of these sensitive issues won't be easy. Vicky Young, BBC News, Westminster. It's hard to imagine that there might come a time when every story of inappropriate behaviour, harassment and sexually abusive activity will be exposed and dealt with, such as the avalanche of revelations from here and from Hollywood. Production was suspended today on Kevin Spacey's House of Cards following his apology for an allegedly predatory act on a young teenager, which he then conflated with his announcement he was gay, which drew huge ire. In Westminster this morning, there were claims that various lists of MPs and ministers facing harassment allegations are circulating. And then tonight came the shocking revelation from a young former Labour NEC member, Bex Bailey, that she was raped at a Labour event in 2011 when she was 19. She told the BBC's Carolyn Quinn that when she approached an official at Party HQ, she was warned of the consequences of making an allegation. Our political editor, Nick Watt, is here. Now, Nick, you know, we don't know, I understand it, anything about the perpetrator, or, but what else, what can you actually tell us, flesh and the bones, about the attack on her? Well, what we know about the perpetrator is that this was somebody who was senior to Bex Bailey in the Labour Party, though not an MP. Mm. And as you say, two years later, in 2013, Bex Bailey approached a senior party official and was told, you really shouldn't report this because this could damage your career. Now, the Labour Party is to appoint an independent legal expert to look essentially at this allegation that the Labour Party was allegedly involved in a cover-up of rape, and this investigator will be looking at how this party official handled these allegations by Bex Bay. But there could, of course, be a criminal investigation. A, a criminal investigation, indeed. But obviously what this will be looking at is whether the proper procedures yeah. were followed by the Labour Party. So this evening, I've been talking to friends and colleagues of Bex Bailey about her decision to speak out. I was seriously sexually assaulted at a Labour Party event by... Uh, it wasn't an MP, but someone who was more senior... To me, it took me a while, um, it took me a while to summon up the courage to tell anyone um, in the party, but um, when I did, um, I told a senior member of uh, staff who told me that, or it was suggested to me that I not report it. I was told that if I did, it might damage me and that might be their genuine view. It might be that that was the case, in which case that shows that we have a serious problem in politics um, with this issue anyway. Bex Bailey is a widely admired Labour campaigner on women's rights inequalities. I first met her a few years ago on the general election campaign trail with her former boss, Liz Kendall. In recent days, as attention focused on the culture of Westminster, Bex Bailey felt that it would be right to speak out in the hope of finally achieving a breakthrough in her long campaign to change the rules on the reporting of sexual harassment and sexual assault. 
Tonight, I spoke to two of Bex Bailey's closest friends and colleagues in the Labour Party. The main thing she's calling for, and others too, is that the Labour Party has an independent third party reporting system so that women can have the confidence that if they speak out, there will be you know, a real and proper change. Too often women are worried about speaking out because the person they may be reporting the assault, abuse or harassment to may work with the person they're accusing, may be a friend or a political ally of them. And that, you know, understandably, people within the party who work for the party don't want, you know, to see the party brought into disrepute but really they should be focusing on the women who have been subject to harassment or assault. And that's why we need this independent system. She has been fighting for a better procedure to help people coming forward with complaints for a number of years. None of us knew her personal history in this. And I think today all of us feel we've let her down. The party has let her down. Things have to change. She gives an incredible example of why it's not good enough to have a hotline staffed by staff. You need an independent third party reporting system. Bex is a strong, courageous, highly principled woman. She has always campaigned for equality and fairness in the party and in the country. And I am beyond proud of her for having the strength and courage to come forward. She didn't want this story to be about her. She wanted it to be about women everywhere and I hope that as a result of her speaking out it will give courage to others and it will give the Labour Party and other political parties the courage to change. That report from Nick Watton we'll be hearing from again in a moment but the Labour Party issued a statement tonight saying it took Bex Bailey's allegations extremely seriously and would support anyone who'd suffered sexual violence. It added the party was launching an independent investigation to the claims and said it hoped the police would investigate. But is this enough? The Labour MP John Mann has been an outspoken critic of his party's record on handling such complaints. Helena Kennedy is a Labour peer and a campaigner on social justice as well as being a QC. Good evening to you both. Mm -hmm. uh, John Mann, you worked with uh, Bex Bailey. Did you know she had been raped? No, not till five o'clock tonight. And presumably you were extremely Trem shocked. Of course, tremendous. Tremendous shock, horrible to happen to anyone, mm -hmm. um, but very, very courageous of her to speak out. Mm -hmm. And uh, for young women who've had any kind of sexual assault, uh, I think they'll be taking uh, some comfort and some encouragement from the fact that she's to spoken out in such a very public way. And of course, there is to be an investigation. Do you know the identity of her uh, attacker or indeed the person she spoke to later, two years later? about reporting it. No, 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 I don't. But I think uh, what, what's vital is that she's in control of the situation from now on. Uh, she's taken control of it. And uh, the Labour Party needs to be listening. You know, Bex, Bex, Bex Bailey was the person on the Labour Party nas National Executive who proposed systems for dealing with exactly this kind of thing uh, when she was on the leadership under Ed Miliband. And the Labour Party didn't accept her proposals. Mm -hmm. So the Labour Party's had a chance in the past to get its house in order. She knew what she was talking about, and the Labour Party hasn't done so, like well, all the other political parties well, in this country. Yes, and we'll, and we'll come on and talking to other political parties as well. Just to say that Ed Milligan man, denies any knowledge of these proposals. Is this the first time you've actually heard about uh, a rape at Westminster? I know there's, uh, there's, there's other allegations uh, I'm, I'm aware of. And, and they're and not they're, public yet? And they're not public yet. And they, they, the allegations vary from rape to, uh, to molestations to inappropriate uh, language. So there's a, the wide variety, but lots of allegations there. And people are coming forward now. Helena Kelly, what do you make of this now in the sense that, that uh, there, there must be a feeling now that women feel safer about coming forward or just feeling so angry that now they're prepared to come forward, whereas before, as Bex Bailey said, you know, she was told that her career would suffer. 
Listen, people's careers did suffer, and, and we know that that's been an inhibitor for women in many different sectors and not just in politics. And, you know, what, what is interesting to me is that I've been writing about this stuff for, for now 35 years. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so the, the, the fact that it has, it's taken so long to get this taken seriously is part of the problem because it's always dealt with as being somewhat, there's a dismissiveness mm -hmm. about, about this. Um, today in, 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 in Parliament, I heard already men saying this is going to give rise to all kinds of false allegations. Mm -hmm. It was the immediate thing that the next step had to be, rather than saying, isn't this disgraceful and scandalous and we have to do something about it, was immediately to minimise it, that it's that it, that, that a bit of badinage. The, the whole thing is that um, in the immediate response, and you get this coming from women, senior women too, you know, if we used to be able to handle this, you just slap somebody on the, on the, on the, but on the it's, hand. But it's all degrees, you know, whether it is somebody putting your hand on your knee to, to someone on the groin, to someone being raped, it is the sense of entitlement that, and this... And this. That's right, and there's, a, and there's a continuum in this. It's about the permissiveness that yeah. allows any of this from the small amount, which is sometimes men in, in offices saying to women, um, oh, what were you doing with your boyfriend last night, and invading, the, in yeah. crossing boundaries. But on this case of, of, of Bex Bailey, do you have faith that investigation will actually change things and will actually perhaps even deal with their perpetrators. Uh, something has happened and I'll tell you what's happened is that we now have a generation of women who are not going to take it anymore. We've got far more young women who've gone through the universities. Yeah. There are far more young women who are, are really are saying enough is enough. But are the systems in place to deal with it and do you, the ha systems are not. Do, do you have faith that the leadership will sort this out? The, 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 systems, the systems are not in place at all. And the danger is people go for something very quick mm -hmm. and, and, you know, uh, let, let's, let's get this behind us and move on because none of us like it. And we, you know, we, Do you recognise what Elena says? Absolutely. I'm, I'm ready people I, are doing sat, the bad analysis. Listen, I, I sat in that statement um, uh, when Parliament at last discussed it. Um, a very short discussion. And it was all backslapping. Mm -hmm. I just want to thank, I want to thank, I want to thank. You know, the people who need thanking are those women who've stood up and, and made complaints, and often, when they've made complaints, not been listened to at all, been dismissed. Is there some... The it, 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 you can talk about this in all different walks of society, but in politics at Westminster, are there places that women can go and talk? You know, this idea that you're going to safeguard. Yes, I mean, l listen, um, you've heard from a number of mm -hmm. women um, members of Parliament talking about the need to, for there to be independent, professionalised uh, systems in place so you can report to the right person. I mean, for example, I, I mean, I know this from other walks of life because I've, I've, I've handled these kinds of cases, is that, is that very often people are approached and they've had no training whatsoever. Mm. The person in the, in the Labour Party that, um, that Bex Bailey went to, I don't know who it was, but the chances are that the person had no idea one way or another how to handle such, such a situation. Because suggestion. it wasn't a priority. But the other thing that's always happened is that institutions like Parliament, whatever they are, they always want to protect reputation mm -hmm. of the party, of the institution, of whatever, rather than protect the individual who's been... You know, do you have faith in abused. the leadership to sort this out, the Labour leadership? Well, I, 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 they're going to be put under the cosh, I can tell you. Thank you both very much indeed. Well, Nick Watt is back again because we've been discussing Labour, but of course the current swirl of allegations reach right across Westminster. What's going on with the government? Well, obviously in the last 48 hours we've had two ministers who've been accused of inappropriate behaviour or inappropriate language. That's Sir Michael Fallon and Mark Garnier. And I think it's fair to say that Theresa May is appalled by these reports. She has spent her 20 years in Parliament trying to change the culture by promoting more women Labour candidates in the Conservative Party. Now, in 2016, when she was strong, she was able to act. When she appointed her cabinet, Stephen Crabbe, who was then the Work and Pension Secretary, she was thinking of reappointing him. He spent three to four hours in Downing Street on that day with the Chief Whip. He was unable to give assurances after the allegations about sexually explicit texts so he was no longer Work and Pension Secretary. Now, in the case of Mark Garnier, Theresa May has referred the matter to the Cabinet Office because the Whips have said to her, Prime Minister, you need to buy time. Because you mean to buy time because you can't afford it. You can't afford it. And also, if one minister goes, then the press will be after the next one and on it goes. Thank you very much indeed.